Hello YouTube. So in this video, we're gonna be going over some different frame designs. And you know, I just wanna say something. You know, I, I never really asked for likes or asked for you to subscribe in any of my videos. I figure if you like the video, you'll like the video. If you wanna see more of my videos, you'll subscribe. And you know, I, on the other side of that though, I never said thank you. And I, I happen to be approaching 2000 subscribers and I never thought I'd make it past 500. So, so thank you, thank you for the support. And uh, those, those likes and subscribes definitely do help. All right, let's get into this. Okay, starting with your basic enduro type frame, which is what I have. Now, these frames are made of carbon steel, and like all frames, they have their pros and cons. And on the pro side is going to be the price. These frames are fairly inexpensive as compared to other frames out on the market, and they're readily available. They have this huge battery compartment which will allow you to put mount the controller inside with the battery if you want to. And they have this really cool kind of industrial look to them. Now on the con side, they are heavy. They weigh in close to 50 pounds. This is probably the heaviest design out there. The battery compartment covers are held on with hex screws, which means that you have to have a tool to gain access. And that could be inconvenient at times. And then once you get those covers off, it's not flush. So it means that if you were to pull your battery out, you've got to lift it up and out. Also, they, it's just something to keep in mind. They really can't take extreme hard off-road abuse. If you use it for that, you're more than likely going to get some damage. Okay, so here's a slimmed down version of that frame. Now with this one, you're more than likely going to have to mount the controller on the outside. I, I don't believe it'll fit inside with the battery. Now that could be a pro or a con depending on what you want to do. Now this frame's definitely going to be lighter and I did have a bit of a problem locking down the weight, but it's somewhere around 35 pounds. Now these frames are reasonably priced and as far as availability, you know, I, I used to see these frames all over Alibaba, AliExpress, and now it's maybe down to one or two vendors. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, but it could be because of some you know, larger builders out there using these. They could just be causing a stock issue right now. As of this video, they still are available. Now they come in a variety of colors and I actually think they look pretty cool. I do, I do like this frame. Okay, and then we have this frame here from Ryzen. Now these frames have been around for a while. I see them everywhere and they are light at 27 pounds and that's because they're narrow. But because they're narrow, you're probably not gonna be able to mount the controller on the inside with the batteries. You're probably gonna have to mount it on the front, which is perfectly fine. And then you're probably gonna end up having to buy their battery to fit that narrow compartment or you know have one custom made or make one yourself. Now the other thing is the bottom bracket is on the frame instead of the swing arm. So when the swing arm moves, it is gonna change the tension of the chain, but that's not gonna be an issue as long as you have a chain tensioner or if you're using a derailleur. Now these frames are a little bit more expensive and they tend to include the rear DNM shock. As far as availability, you can get them directly from Ryzen and I also see them on AliExpress and I believe I did see them on Amazon as well. Okay, and here we have this frame from Enduro e-bikes. Now this frame's very popular. You see it everywhere and for good reason. The construction method they used keeps the frame light at about 25 pounds and that's partially due to the plastic panels they have. Now these panels are removable with thumb screws so you're not gonna need a tool, which is real nice. You know, that's one of my pet peeves with my frame. It's kind of a pain to get, you know, go in there and remove all those Allen screws. And once you get those panels off, you've got a nice big area. You can slide that battery right out. It makes it very easy to work on. Now, these frames are available pretty much everywhere. I believe I've even seen them on Amazon. The, the one downside is they are a little bit more expensive, but I still feel like they're reasonably priced. Okay, here's this frame from Elite. Now I believe this is the same frame used by Vector e-bikes and it is one of my favorite frames in this design. Now that's partially due to its construction. They're using triangles in the corners and I do feel that that makes it stronger. Now the frame still remains light at 26 pounds. Now on the downside, it is a bit narrow, but they make these wide plastic panels to accommodate your battery. But I really do like the sleek look of this frame. And you know, maybe one more downside, it, it is a bit more expensive, but I can't say it's outrageous. I feel like it's still reasonably priced. Now, as far as availability goes, you can buy these directly from Elite, 
and they have a wide variety of options that you can you can use which makes it convenient and then or you can order these directly from vector e-bikes as well okay and then we have this frame here now obviously this is a totally different design than the flat steel type that we're used to seeing now the, this frame is made out of square tube aluminum and that makes it light at about 22 pounds You'll also notice that it has a large battery box, and that battery box is separate from the frame. So that makes me think that you can make that a removable battery box, so you can bring it into your home or work for charging. I mean, that would be extremely convenient. And then another thing, if your current battery does not fit in that battery box, you could always make a new one or have one made. Now these frames are available in a wide variety of colors, and they actually are reasonably priced. So as far as availability goes, I've seen them on AliExpress, Alibaba, and I believe I've even seen them on eBay. Now, like everything else, I will include the links in the description, and, and please let me know what you guys think of this frame in the comments. Okay, before we get into the next frame, I wanna show you my all-time favorite e-bike design, and that's this one here. It's from a company called Nomadic. Now, they since sold this prototype to another company. They made some changes to it, and I, I don't know what happened to it after that. But I just love this tube-style frame design with that huge battery compartment. And the one thing that I really like about it is it still looks like a bicycle. I mean, when you first look at this, I think you would say bicycle before you said motorcycle. Now, it did have a downside, and that was the price. It was somewhere north of $13,000. Now this, this one does have Fox suspension on it, so that's gonna account for some of that. But it just got me thinking, you know, why can't these type of frames be available to us do-it-yourselfers? You know, why are we kind of stuck with the same kind of design? And, you know, I did some checking and, and I did find one. It's this frame here, and this is from a company called Lubui. Now this frame's made of stainless steel. Yeah, they don't mess around, <laughs> but and it still weighs, it's not too bad on the weight at 33 pounds. I guess it's somewhere in the middle uh, and it does have a large battery compartment. Now I did contact this company and they would be able to accommodate my, uh, my battery dimensions. They, they just have to modify that battery box to make it a little bit wider to make it fit. So they will work with you in that sense. Now they are a little bit pricey at around $1,100, but when you really think about it, let's say we had this, we got this frame, and we use all the components that we normally use in our enduro e-bikes, like the, that, you know, the basic hub motor, the controller, and, you know, to put some DNM forks on it, DNM shocks, you know, you, you would be sitting at about $4,500. And I think that's just a screaming deal for a bike that exceeds 60 miles an hour, and a bike that you would be able to just hammer off-road. Okay, that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you if you're trying to decide which frame to get. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next video.